This program is sponsored by Newcastle County Government. Welcome to the Chef Dana Show, and I'm here with my girl, Ashley Thayer Coleman. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. So, we had to do something healthy. We, we killed it last time for breakfast. Yes, it was so much fun. Oh, our strata was such a hit. But, today, we are going to make a summer vegetable pasta. Oh. And because it's actually a meatless dish, we're going to spoil you with a little dessert. We're going to do a little grilled pineapple, some fresh berries, and your special whipped cream. All right, listen, you, you had me at grilled pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so good. So what veggies are we doing today? Okay, so in our summer pasta, we are actually going to do asparagus, uh -huh. zucchini, squash, and tomatoes. Okay. So basically the idea is find whatever's in season. Okay. Right now, I mean, it's summer, asparagus is very much in season, summer squash, which is your yellow and your zucchini squash. Mm -hmm are easy to find and on budget. Gotcha. So we're going to use those, but you can mix and match. You can add spinach if you wanted to. A lot of times in the winter, I like to add spinach or kale, a more leafy, green, leafy green. Give you a little extra yeah. iron. A little extra iron. But the reason why we chose, I'll tell you, asparagus and zucchini and squash, very rich in folate, vitamin A, and vitamin C. So it boosts your immune system, and vitamin A is good for your skin. Did you know uh -oh, that? Girls, pay attention. Vitamin A. So zucchini and squash. Zucchini and squash. But first, let's cut up the onion. Okay. I have half of a sweet Vidalia onion. And I've actually cut it in a quarter. So that way we can make little half moon shapes. While you're doing uh. that, I'm going to drop our whole wheat pasta. You can use any pot kind of pasta. I have rotini noodles. They're the little curly cues. That's what my daughters call them because their hair is curly. So they like the curly pasta. <laughs> um, we're going to drop it in our already boiling water. Probably losing some in the basket, but it's okay. Drop that in, and that's going to boil about 10 to 12 minutes is what the package says. Just cook it accordingly. Okay. Okay. Now, my pan is heating up. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of olive oil, so that way we can start to saute our onions and our fresh garlic. All right. So I love oh. garlic. Oh, garlic is so yummy. It adds so much flavor without adding additional calories, which is good. So it helps to keep it healthy, but very flavorful. I think almost every dish that I make where I read a recipe and it says garlic, you know, two cloves, mm -hmm. I'm throwing like four in there. Well, so <laughs> I will tell you, um, normally I do anywhere from two to three cloves of garlic. I already have it, you know, pre-chopped for you, but you can use minced garlic. If you're not a big garlic lover, use one. Okay. If you are a garlic lover, sure. Add three. You can add a fourth <laughs> one, especially if they're not like huge, if the cloves aren't that big. So our oil is heated. We're okay. going to add our Vidalia onion. I like to use a Vidalia onion. My kids don't really like onions that much. Uh -huh. So it has a little sweeter flavor. Okay. Not as strong. And you cut those beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and add those in. And let those start to cook down. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. And so I need to cut these two. Yes. Kind of like, you want half moon? Yes, please. All right. We're going to the moon. So vitamin A. Mm-hmm. Vitamin C. Help with your... Yeah, so if you are, if you have teens and tweens at home, maybe starting to develop a little acne. First of all, the steam facials are fabulous for you coming from the pasta <laughs> pot as well for your skin. But vitamin A actually helps with acne, helps to prevent it, or if you are more acne prone, helps to cure it. So don't rub the zucchini on your face. I, I, I was about to ask no, because you, the you know, fiber from the you know how fellas are. We're like, do we just rub it or <laughs> do, do I sleep with it all much? Do I have to eat it or just rub it <laughs> no, on? The, you okay. need to eat it because you want the other vitamins uh, and the fiber from okay. it. <laughs> you know how guys are. We we want the quick way. We're not reading the directions when we put together the bike or anything like that. <laughs> 
No, that's not what we're doing. That's yes, not what we're doing. Is, this is a very flexible recipe, so you can kind of make this how you'd like, but we're going to follow some directions. <laughs> okay, so my onions are starting to sweat down, and I'm going to go ahead and add, I have actually, it's like probably about two cloves of garlic here that I've chopped up. You can finely chop them. If you have one of those fun gadget mincers, you can mince your garlic in that if you'd like. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and let that saute. You can already start to smell the onions. It smells fabulous. Now, what are the, some of the other ways you like to use like asparagus or squash in, in, in uh, your healthy cooking? Well, so asparagus is a big favorite in the Fair household. Okay. And we, I like to roast it in the oven serve it alongside any protein. So whether you have salmon, chicken, steak, it goes fabulous if you roast it. I also like to grill it in the summer, mm. which is so fun. Put it over an open flame, tastes fabulous. So I'm going to actually add the asparagus now because it takes a little longer to cook fresh asparagus. So we're gonna go ahead and let that get going with the onions. Zucchini and squash don't take as long to cook. Okay. And you still want a little crunch with your vegetables with the pasta. So not, don't overcook it. Correct. But cook it enough so that it's tender enough. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. you want to cook out all the vitamins too. Gotcha. Um, that happens when we do overcook our vegetables and they get really soft and really mushy. Mm -hmm. You're cooking out the vitamins, the nutrients, the minerals, the fiber. You're breaking down some of those things that our body actually really likes. So. Gotcha. I noticed like, when I eat healthy, mm -hmm. my body actually craves more mm -hmm. of the vegetables yes. and fruits versus um, some of the heavier starches or the heavier proteins. It really, I mean, your body loves vegetables. So anytime, any and every meal you can add a vegetable mm -hmm. is ideal. Okay. So if you're having breakfast, you know, you could cook a vegetable with your breakfast. You can cook it within your eggs, like even asparagus with eggs mm -hmm. tastes fabulous. I mean, I'm thinking like asparagus, and I see the Parmesan over mm -hmm. there, like an asparagus and Parmesan-like omelet. Oh, that sounds so good. Add a little tomato with it, too. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add our half-moon-shaped zucchini and squash. You're a whiz with the knife. Thank you. All right, and it's okay to go heavy on the vegetables. So this is basically, the veggies are basically going to make all the, um, I'm not going to say sauce, but I'm going to say all the mm -hmm. seasoning for the pasta. Yes, very much so. So this is where your flavor is coming in, is from the vegetables themselves. But then later on, I'll show you, I have a little secret. So that way it creates more of a sauce, so but without adding a sauce. For the tomatoes there, mm -hmm. do I need to cut those or no, we're gonna you're going to put them whole. in just like mm -hmm. that? Okay. Well, my girls like them whole because then once they start to cook just a little bit, they like to put them in their mouth and then they burst and they explode. <laughs> so that's always fun. You know, you got to make your dishes fun for the family. Yeah. All right, how are we doing there? It's almost looking pretty good. I love this little basket. I need this little basket at home. Definitely. Definitely. We, we use these all the time on the line in the restaurants. So when people order the pasta dish, you can put their individual serving Serving? In the pot. That is mm -hmm. so helpful. Okay, yep. before we drop the pasta, I am going to add one tablespoon uh -huh. of dried Italian seasoning. So this is parsley, basil, um, rosemary. It smells good. Mm -hmm. But that just also adds a little additional flavor. Okay. Okay, so toss that around just a little bit and then we will add our pasta. Now, when we add the pasta, I will also add about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup of the pasta water. So remember I said this pasta doesn't really have a sauce. Right. Um, but the pasta water, because it also has the starch from the pasta already cooked in, mm -hmm. it helps to thicken up the pasta and gives you a little bit of a sauce. Okay. Okay. Once all the flavors come together. And so, I'm just recapping, on the cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. you throw them in at the last second. I throw them in at the last second. I actually put the, I'm going to put a couple of them in first. We're going to add the pasta and I'll put the rest of them in. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to put a couple in and then we're going to dump the pasta in. 
Okay. Now, when I make this at home, I have a ginormous pan. There's a lot of us. Uh oh, we're losing an onion. Um, there's six of us in our family. Six? Six. Six Four golden. girls, one husband, and me. Look, I'm like, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Bro, you are outnumbered, buddy. I know, I know. Poor Dereardon. Listen, but I can empathize with you because yeah. I have three daughters. You're outnumbered anyway. And yeah. a wife. So I am totally outnumbered. You really are. Totally outnumbered. It's fun, though. It is. Girls are fun. It, it, you know what? I grew up in a boy household. Um, all boys, and it was just my mom. So it was like the total flip flop. Oh, so the opposite. I'm getting that whole learning curve right now. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep. Oh but I will boy. say it is a beautiful thing. Oh. That whole daddy daughter relationship is real. It's special. Mm -hmm. It's really special. It's one of a kind relationship. Okay, let's drop our pasta in. Okay. All right, I'm just going to flash it for a second, get it warm. Oh, that's a chef technique right uh -huh. there. We flash it when we pull it out. That way it gets it warm, freshen back up. Loosens it up real fast and going right in. Yep, going right in. There okay. You go. Now, today we're using about a half a box. So okay. it's roughly about four servings of pasta. Okay. Um, usually a box has about eight servings. But if you were making this for my tribe of six, uh -huh. I use the whole box. You use the whole box, okay. Yeah. Now, I know in the beginning you mentioned that you were using um, a whole wheat pasta. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, it gives you a little bit more fiber, okay. a little bit more nutrients, less right. refined than white pasta. Okay. And honestly, here's the trick to whole wheat pasta, because my husband used to say that it tastes different. Um, it's a little thicker than like your regular pasta. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, it's really not. The trick is, if the box tells you 10 to 12 minutes, shoot for 12 minutes. Mm. Um, if you don't like al dente whole wheat pasta, that'll get it closer to the consistency that you're used to in a traditional white pasta, mm. which is okay. good. So that's like my little, like, you know, you're mm. getting the benefit of a whole wheat pasta, right. but it tastes more like the pasta you're used to. That you're used to. I gotcha. Okay, I'm going to add a few more tomatoes. I'm going to add them all. I'll just add them all. I'll just add them all. <laughs> They're fine. And you're just going to let the tomatoes get a little bit warm. I'm also going to add a little salt and pepper. And then I have a few basil leaves that I've already chopped up from my garden at home. Okay, so you're growing your own herbs and I everything? I did. You know, it's... What, what do you like to grow? So I like to grow basil because it's easy. Mm -hmm. It grows fast and it's easy. So if you've never um, grown any kind of herb at home, start with basil. Okay. It's the beginner one. A little salt, a little pepper. And then I also like to grow parsley. I like to grow thyme. Thyme's another very easy one for people to grow. Okay. Um, I'm growing oregano. However, I've never used fresh oregano. So as it's growing, I'm trying to um, think about how, yeah, think about how I'm going to use it. Well, add certainly, it. you can use it in your pastas, yep. chicken, um, fish. It'll work well in there too. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to turn. I have my down. little fiascos with growing. Like the herbs, I feel you on the basil. Basil makes you look like you're a pro. You are a pro. The, You've been growing your whole life. What else? Cilantro comes up really Cilantro's nice. Cilantro's easy. Mm -hmm. So I got maybe a little overly confident, right? After the first uh -oh, year of uh -oh. growing. And so the next year, I literally was growing uh, the string beans, right? Wow. And tomatoes. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't understand that at that time, like tomatoes need a little room. Yes, they need a so lot of room. I, I might have allegedly planted like a bunch <laughs> of seeds in a really small box. Oh no. And it came up like this bush, like boom. <laughs> but I never got a tomato. Oh goodness, because we didn't have enough room didn't to grow. Didn't have enough room to grow. Well, and how'd you do with the green beans? So I tried to grow green beans one time, and I didn't realize that you need like a thousand green bean plants instead of just... My green beans, crazy part was they popped out of the ground first, uh -huh. like exploded out the ground. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. So I'm adding about a quarter of a cup of the pasta water. But the same thing, I did not give them enough room to... To really grow? So I got like one bean, that was it. <laughs> so I did, you know, I had about four green bean plants. Okay. But four green bean plants don't give you enough green beans for dinner. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. So even though I had space to grow them, I had them, you know, they say like you're supposed to put them like six to 12 inches apart. You know, I had that all plotted out in the ground. See what I mean? The girls follow the direction. <laughs> That's, reading is fundamental. Right. <laughs> but, um, but no, I didn't realize that you actually need like 20 plants in order yeah. to get enough green beans for dinner. I see. Okay, so this is That's about done. That's looking yummy. It is so good. Oh, it smells amazing. Let's turn off our... Um, our, our sauna. Our, our sauna, our facial right there. All right, we can turn this one off. Okay. So basically that's done, and then from there it's just a matter of sprinkling on the Parmesan cheese, yeah. and then you're good to go. Yep, so I have some already pre-grated Parmesan cheese, so when you go to serve it up, you can sprinkle it a little bit, and then it's ready to go. Okay, okay. Do you want to get started on dessert first before we start plating this up for everybody to don't, eat? Don't tease me. All right. All right, so next is we're going to do the... Um, the pineapple, right? Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. So, pineapple is so fun and it is so easy. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, don't be intimidated when you see a whole pineapple at the store. Um, it's a lot cheaper to buy it than buying it already pre-cut up. So, I'm going to show you how we cut into it. First things first, you just twist and the crown comes off. Girl, you know up. I've never twisted and the, gr and the crown come off. Really? I've n I'm <laughs> You learn oh, something I new. Teach you something new today. Every day, and when you stop learning, it's over. Well, See, yes. she just showed me something new right there. Yeah. I've never done the twist mode. So the twist mode is so easy. Okay. okay. When you cut, you're gonna cut on the top, cut on the bottom, so you get a nice flat surface. All right. Oops, didn't cut off enough. And while you're doing that, I am actually going to take our little stems off of the strawberries. Okay. Okay, so now put it upright. Mm hmm And then you just cut down the sides, pe essentially peeling the pineapple. Gotcha. Peel the pineapple. Peel, peel the pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> that's not really a thing. Uh, that sounds like cheer battle at my house. Oh, my gosh. Anybody that's a dad with girls, you're going to know uh, what cheer battle is. Oh, boy. They're like cheer battle. Cheer battle. You don't have girls. Okay. So I'm going to take the little stems off the strawberries while you are peeling our pineapple. That really was a slick little twist move on the top, though. Oh I've never gosh. seen that. Well, I have a friend, Daryl, who works at the Port of Wilmington. Uh-huh. And he works for the USDA. And he taught me that because, you know, the Port of Wilmington is actually one of the biggest banana and fresh fruit ports. I heard that. And he taught me that trick. And I've never forgotten. He probably taught me that trick maybe 15 years ago. All so, right. so fun. Okay. So I've got the sides off the pineapple. All right, and while you're doing that. So you want me to cut slices or cut in half and cut, cut in slice? half first because we want to remove the woody stem, essentially that runs through the middle. Get rid of the salt and pepper. We do not need that. Having the pineapple reminds me of uh, my, my late grandfather. We would go out to eat on Saturday mornings. He'd love to take us out to get something to eat, and he mm. would always go by like this one place, and it, it was like a buffet. We went there so much, they knew us, and they were like, uh-oh. Is that the two little Herbert kids? Yeah, uh -oh. they're going to eat us out of home on the pineapple. Get ready. Right. Restock so they would the pineapple. make sure they would restock the pineapple for us. <laughs> okay. So we have an indoor grill. Um, it is a griddle grill, but it's easy. So you could do this also over your open flames outside, charcoal, gas grill. Um, I'm going to turn this on to grill. And we're gonna preheat that. Easy. Um, it is a nonstick surface. If you were using a regular grill, um, I'd recommend maybe oiling, adding a little oil to your grates. But this will be okay. We don't need to add oil. Okay. Fantastic. You're doing good over there. All right. Let me get the middle out of this next one. All right. Let's see. Where did I leave off on my strawberries? There we go. Okay. Now the thing about grilled fruit, you could do this, again, any fruit that is in season. So you and I were talking about peaches. I love peaches. Peaches in Delaware come into season more in like June. So we're a little early on peaches. That's yep. why we decided to do pineapple. But you could also do nectarines, plums, melon. Did you know we used to be the peach capital of the United States? Yes. Unfortunately, crops got uh, 
what was it, disease, mm -hmm. and we lost all the peaches. So, but there used to be trains and rail cars that would pull up every day to take tons of peaches away for the rest of the United States. Yep. Right here in Delaware. Peaches are, um, there's a fun farm in Kent County that I like to go to to get peaches and asparagus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all about too, you find the fruits and vegetables that are in season and then that way then you can shop local. You can, um, you know, support your local businesses, your mom pops. Right. And that's what we love. All right, so all I right. got the pineapple here all cut up. Okay, so I have a little bit of um, pure cane sugar. Ooh. So if you can sprinkle it, just a little bit, sprinkle each slice. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna put them on the grill. On that side there? Heating up, they both sides should be heated. Oh. Yes, it's a fancy one, both sides You lay up. it out and then both sides get some love. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. my bowl of citrus out of the way. Okay, let me get some more pineapple laid out here. Okay. Now I noticed you're using, um, is it, you said like pure cane sugar, right? Mm-hmm. So less refinement, less stuff taken out? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the whole thing when you go to eat healthy and you're cooking at home. Um, look for whole ingredients or ingredients that are not as refined as much. So you're shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. What's on the perimeter? Your fruits, your vegetables, your proteins, your dairy. And then you are, you know, then you hit the inside aisles. But there, after you already picked up everything else on the perimeter. Gotcha. Same goes with like sugar, with juices, anything like that that's less refined, mm -hmm. you're helping your body because you're getting the whole ingredient. Okay. All right, I think we are heated. I feel some heat coming off of here. And we can go ahead and add these on. Add some pineapple to that? Yep. Okay. Oh, I hear the sizzle. Sizzle is good. Sizzle is good. And I like even like the grilled peaches on the salads. Mm. That's one of my faves. I love adding fruit to summer salads. Mm -hmm. I think it just gives it a little wake up. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Okay. All right. And throw away my strawberry stems here. So that way then, now do we want to be extra decadent? What on is, our dessert. Look, what is extra decadent? Well, we could add a little bit of cane sugar to our strawberries and blueberries. Ooh, that would be good. Kind of like back in the day when grandma used to give you just the berries. Yes! And she would always save like leftover biscuits. Mm-hmm. And just throw that berries on top of the right biscuit. Right on top, and it's a dessert. It's like a strawberry shortcake. Yep, and she would always have some whipped cream. Okay. So, you are the chef, the pastry chef. <laughs> Mr. Pastry. All right, I'm gonna I'm whip ready. up some whipped cream. This is what we used to do back in culinary school when we were in trouble. Uh -oh. They'd be like, oh yeah? Oh, you were late today. Uh -oh. All right, go ahead and go make the whipped cream. And you'd go reach for, say, a KitchenAid or a mixer. You'd be like, ah, 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 ah. You're doing it by hand today. You're like, oh. So hold on, wait, you have a spatula? Huh? You, you're going to use a spatula? Oh, no, no. I'm oh, using you have a whisk. Oh, too. <laughs> I was like, uh, that is really hardcore. If you had, right. They were not nice if you had to use a spatula. <laughs> we would have been there till next year <laughs> on the spatula. You'd still be there. You'd right. still be there. Like, Can I go home? Can I go home now? Now, what's right. that? This is just a little bit of ginger I'm putting in here just to go along with our pineapple. A little bit of um, agave nectar. We're already being spoiled, like we get dessert, so I'm like, why not use agave? <laughs> uh -oh. Instead of the traditional sugar, we won't spike that uh, glycemic index too fast. Correct. And I then, like agave, especially if you're not a honey fan. Mm -hmm. um, honey can have such a strong flavor. It can. Agave, you know, does the job without the strong floral scent or flavor that honey has. It does. Like honey's a great sweetener, but you have to like honey. Correct. Correct. You know honey's good if you have younger kids with coughs. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if they're allergy coughs or a cold, um, honey's a good way to kind of help coat their throat so they don't cough as much without giving them cough medicine because a lot of cough medicines kids can't have. So there you go. Give your kids a teaspoon of honey. Not like Mary Poppins though. A spoonful of sugar. Right. right. <laughs> that doesn't do the same thing. 
go. It's coming. I can already see the uh, viscosity has changed in the bowl. Um, so it's getting there. It's coming along pretty quick. But, you know, like, it's like when you're used to uh, the, the torture. Maybe I was uh -huh. late, late a few too many times. But uh, <laughs> when you're used to the torture, you know, you got to get that arm going. Because once it gets there, it'll maintain there. I remember in some of the hotels I worked at, we were... Um, we were we would have to do these huge plate ups, two thousand, three thousand. Oh, like a like catering food. event, like a whole event for uh -huh. people. I'm gonna but, get a bigger bowl for our berries. Okay, but the secret was once you got the whipped cream going, uh -huh. you could slowly pour in another quart and another quart, and it would just fluff right up real fast. As opposed to pouring your three All quarts in it. at once. Uh -huh. oh. Oh, well, that's a good pro tip. So if you have to, if you want to make fresh whipped cream, which right. again, when we talk about whole ingredients, that's a nice way to, um, you know, cut the extra additives than like the tub of whipped cream. Correct. We won't even go into the tub. The tub has a lot of stuff that you don't really want to eat that often. Right. So we have arrived. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep, All right. there we go. We are where we need to be. Now, how long, like, will it stay like that? Like, so say you want to make it ahead of time, but you're not eating for another 30 minutes. Well, how would you keep it, or do you have to? The whipped cream, if, if you're not going to eat it for mm -hmm. a while, I normally say definitely refrigerate it because it is a perishable item. Um, I would definitely keep it in the refrigerator. As long as you've taken it to at least to a medium or somewhere in between a medium and a stiff peak, it mm -hmm. should hold up for a while in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. All right, so whipped cream is done. All right, our pineapple is almost done and ready to be flipped. I'm gonna add a little bit of that cane sugar, and then I'm gonna sprinkle the other side of the pineapples as well. Okay. So then when we flip them, they will be ready to go. Mmm, I can already smell, it smells amazing. It's like Hawaii in here right now. Okay. Mm. All okay. right. So we're gonna need a. What are we gonna need? We're, we're gonna, gonna need, need a nice little bowl for pasta. A bowl for pasta and a pretty, pretty little dessert plate. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Work smarter, not harder, Ashley. There we go. Oh, we're not getting our grill mark yet. Let's crank this baby up some. Now, if you were over an open flame, uh -huh. these bad boys would be really, really going. Oh, yeah. See, look, we're starting to get some good uh -huh. there we go. brown marks on that one. Starting to get some good caramelization. That also means yummy, yummy flavor. So now, when you're eating dessert, yes. um, and I noticed she said we have a treat for you all today. Um, when people want to indulge in dessert, mm -hmm. but still maintain a, a somewhat of a nutritious and balanced approach to their diet. Are there any tips or secrets? Um, so my biggest thing is if you want it, have it. Uh -huh. Enjoy yourself. Because if you deprive yourself, um, you're only going to want it more, and then you're going to binge, <laughs> and then you're going to feel bad, because then you're going to say, oh, I How did I eat the whole, whole container of ice cream as right. opposed to um, give yourself the serving size. Um, so I believe in it. Like, I, I love Oreos. Oreos are like my kryptonite. They're my go-to. But the serving size for an Oreo, double, double stuffed. I don't do original. Double stuffed Oreos. That's a little secret you've learned about me. Um, but I will have two. The serving size is two. I will treat myself to a little dessert after dinner, have two Oreos, and then dinner done on to other fun. Okay. So, you know, you have your little treat, have your little dessert. I don't do it every night, but I get and to have you, it. you follow the serving size. Yes. That's the important That's part. That's the key. That's the key. And then, because you get the taste, you still enjoy it. So, like, when there's the whole cake and don't, it says, nope. like, a serving size, you know, is, like, one slice and it should serve 16, but I cut it and I only see eight pieces. <laughs> cut that piece in half. 
<laughs> Ashley, come on, work with me. Uh, you know, and here's the thing. If you do it every once in a while, uh, and, you know, it's all about moderation. There too. you go. You know, I'm you, with you on that. You have I'm to totally enjoy life. I mean, you know, we come to your bakery, and we get the cake pops, and I'm supposed to get six, and I'll get more, and because I'll eat two. You know, like, enjoy life. Life's mm -hmm. too short. You have to have fun, and you have to enjoy it. The pineapple's looking good. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. Okay, so as these continue, we're going to then top them with our berries and our fresh whipped cream. Let's scoop up some pasta into our bowl. Okay. We'll and get, get that, that part up. of, well, you know, we should eat the vegetables before we eat the dessert. We that should is eat true. dinner first. That is true. Okay. Ashley helps keep me alive. <laughs> well, I try, it's, you know. You're like, chef, you're out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's one. Okay, so I am going to top so how this they finish that? with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. If you like a lot of Parmesan cheese, you ever go to the restaurant and they say, say when, and I don't say when. I just let them keep going. <laughs> and that's when they give you the funny look. And that's when they're like, um, hey, lady, anytime now. And then my husband will go, you're going to go, okay, she's done. She's done. Because <laughs> <laughs> he feels bad. Oh, my goodness, this looks amazing. My wife's joke is normally when... I say cheese, more please. More please. Yes. Cheese, more please. Let's give you some more please. There you go. Okay, here's a fork for you for that. Okay, let's try this let's one. Let's try quick. this. Get some of the yummy vegetables, the asparagus. Let the tomatoes explode in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It's so fresh and light. Um I don't feel guilty. No. <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm a Both firm are. believer in you can have pasta. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have dessert. It's just about moderation and serving size. This Rock is so bread. good. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready to plate our dessert? Yes. Okay. Mm. I'm going to my pasta over here to the side. Okay. Let's grab some grilled pineapple. And because it's fruit, you can have a little bit more. I'm saying it's actually vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in Oh, there. yes. So That's much good. fun stuff. All of the good things that you want and that you need. There you go. Let's get a little spoon there. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Oh, right am now. I in the underneath wrong? Okay. Wrong section. Okay. There we go. All right. So we got our fruit. And then just a nice little come here. Ooh, a fresh whipped cream. Fresh whipped cream. And that makes, come here, little pineapple. It's running from me. It is. It doesn't want me to eat it. A uh, little to eat now. I'm going to eat it. And I'm going to enjoy it. Come here. Look at this. This is like the magic of live TV. This is what happens. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to try this ginger whipped cream. I think you're gonna like it. Wait, hold on, you need a spoon to eat with. <coughs> Thank you. All right, let me see. Okay. Some of the pineapple and the berries. Mmm. That's pretty good. Mmm. This is the way you do dessert, especially on a warm summer day. Mm-hmm. Mmm. All right, guys. So good. If you haven't checked her out yet, Please follow Ashley all over Instagram. This girl, she's working it out. She's <laughs> yoga. Was it yoga in it out? Yoga she's eating healthy. She's helping you live a better lifestyle. Follow her. This is Ashley Thera Coleman. I'm Chef Dana Herbert. This has been the Chef Dana Cooking Show right here on DETV. Mm -hmm.